。大家好，欢迎来到呃 Blue Rider 二台北敦人。这一档是一档特别的双人展，呃，展名是《社群图鉴》（Profile Picture）。两位艺术家 Ring Boyer 以及 Ramiro Estrada。这两位艺术家共同点。他们都是出生于八零后的艺术家，他们其实生长的呃背景就是我们所谓 social media 这个网络平台兴起的年代，但是他们呃各自在不同的国家，他们不同的呃男女性别，呃 ，Ramiro Estrada 他是来自于阿根廷布宜诺斯，呃 ，Ring Boyer。他是来自于这个芝加哥，两位都是年轻的艺术家，两位都以人像探讨社群网络这个议题，社群图鉴这个议题，呃，在对我们当下的生活的影响。那我们现在很高兴跟我在线上的，就是这两位艺术家来跟我们谈谈他们的创作。Hi, Ring. Good evening. I know it's good、uh, pretty late now in Chicago. Yes, I、Hi. should say good morning. <laughs> yeah. Hi,、uh, it's、okay. Ramiro. It's also pretty late right now, right? Like、uh, pretty late. Hi, also good morning. Yeah. Thank you.、Uh, so I just give a brief introduction of you.、Uh, would you like to、uh, briefly introduce you a little bit? Why、uh, you started with?、Uh, Portrait. Why you become a portrait artist, and since when you are interested in such a topic?、Uh, could you start,、uh, Ramiro? Okay. Yeah.、Uh, so my name is Ramiro. I'm 38 years old. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um. Till I was 10 years old, I live at a at a farm for my grandfather. It was pretty far away, so. I didn't have much contact with civilization, except for school. So I always been drawing portraits since I'm a, since I'm a kid. Even though I was living at a farm with a lot of nature, I would always always be drawing my brothers, my father, and my grandfather. And、um, I think for me, portrait is a way to approach people, to get to know them, and at the same time, maybe talk a little bit about myself too. Mm-hmm. So、um, yeah, I've always been doing portraits ever since then. Yeah, and Rin. Yeah,、uh, Rin Boyer,、uh, forty years old.、Um, I I've also been creating portraits since I was very young.、Um, I studied in college under an abstract artist, and so I got interested in color and shape, and learned a lot from him.、Um, but ultimately, felt like everything is really about people, you know. If we look at a landscape, we think about kind of how people inhabit that landscape, and so people have always stayed my main subject matter because I feel that everything kind of comes back to who we are, how we see each other, how we think about each other. Yeah,、uh, I think social media is a how it impact our、uh, nowadays our life.、Uh, it's a very large topic that.、Uh, We can only talk a little bit about it, but in our statement、uh, from your shows, we mentioned about the.、Uh, it's like uh, uh, you know the Greek god, the now the the you know the twenty first century Greek god. <laughs> That's a very interesting、uh, term. Also, we mentioned about the narcissism.、Um, In 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 current、uh, phenomenon. So,、uh, would you like to talk about this show? What you try to deliver in your painting? Because、uh, it's too broad for social media. But for you as an artist, what do you try to say from your work? This show. I think、uh, for this show, my sort of central concept was、uh, local networks, valuing local networks, thinking about how we're interconnected, both online and offline, and the power of those connections. You know, even though、um, 
some of the people in the portrait may only be famous for a few people and some may be famous for a lot more. They're still all playing an important role in this kind of interconnected web of people. So I, um, yeah, I wanted to take that web online and offline and play around with that. Mm -hmm. I, I've been working in the past three years. I've been switching from like actual portraits, like the two smaller paintings you have in the show with the girl with the candle and the book. And then I've been working on kind of like what I consider a different style where you don't see the whole body, you just see some parts of it. And I wanted to, and I started seeing that as a transition maybe, going from the full figurative portrait to the more abstract one where you just kind of like lose your identity and you're just like a slogan, like the live, love and loathe. So I, I try to play with that, with the whole process of like losing your, or I wouldn't say losing your personality, but like maybe changing into this virtual self that we have too. So I wanted to like talk about that transition, going from the full figurative ones to the much abstract ones. Yeah, I noticed uh, other than the portrait itself, you also put some symbols uh, in your paintings. Um, would you like to talk about all those symbols? What, what do you uh, stand for or what do you wish to uh, deliver? Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember the paintings. Yeah, in one of those, again, at the same time, I'm, I'm putting stuff on the paintings that relates to me and my inner circle in a way like Ryan says. There's some hidden stuff that my friends will recognize and go like, ah, okay, yeah, that's in your room, that's in your studio. So I also talked to, to like my inner circle, but in this case, I remember I used the book Serotonin from Michelle Welbeck, which I think the title says it all. She's not happy and is holding a book that says Serotonin and with the bad bunny in the background. So like, I was trying to like talk about opposite things, like on social media again, like this big bad bunny, happy guy from the beach in contraposition with the serotonin book and the girl not looking very happy. Um, I use a lot of books in my in my paintings. Um, I think the other book I use is Justine by Marquez de Sade, which is like a very sexual book. And I think that social media is surrounded a lot by sexuality too and desire. So I wanted to like talk a little bit about that. And at the same time, it's about experiences of my own. This year I went to visit my sister in Colombia and I took some photos of fruits from there, some, some floor patterns that I like, and I just introduced them in the work. Mm -hmm. How about ring? Uh, for this series, the, I use the symbols from the um, HTML of the um, image as it read in the browser uh, from the social media site. Um, and with that, I was trying to sort of ground the paintings in where they come from, that they're originally digital, and also um, pull to the surface, literally, the work that is done behind the scenes to show these images. I think the way they're presented to us, they're in this feed where they just kind of cascade and they feel like they're just disposable but really these are files that are on a server that someone had to write instructions to have them show on your page and so i wanted to kind of pull some of that to the surface and i did all the shapes by hand so i added some labor to it so that you could kind of feel that labor that happens seamlessly behind the scenes but is really there every time we go on social media okay so um we, we all know portrait has a long history in uh, art history. And during the long history of art, is there any other artists or any other uh, poets, mm -hmm. literature that influenced your art? Ramiro? So um, getting back to the whole me living in the farm when I was, when I was a kid, Growing up in Argentina in the 90s, uh, I remember my parents used to buy this newspaper that would come with these VHS videos of different famous artists. And I remember the first two I got was Velázquez and Van Gogh. And I was, and Van Gogh was like the first artist that really like appealed to me with the color, which 
Ryan reminds me a little bit of that with the bright colors, so I'm, I'm attracted to that. And also, at the same time, Van Gogh was an artist that really worked on portraits too, besides being a landscaper. He, he worked a lot of, on self-portraits and on other subjects, like I always remember his, his doctor, Dr. Gachet's portrait. Um, and I was just looking at it, like, I knew we were gonna talk about this in the interview, so I was looking at that painting the other day and I realized that the guy is holding, in one of the sketches, he has some books on the table and some flowers in it. And some of the paintings that I sent for this show, they have books on it, so kind of like goes around. But yeah, I think Van Gogh was one of the first. And then as I grew older and start digging more into portrait, I would say that now I like uh, Van Eyck or Franz Hall, like all the Flemish artists that work a lot on portrait, much more detail now. But uh, I use that kind of painting as reference when I'm when using on the on how to put the hands in the paintings or the gestures. That's those are the ones that I that I look up to. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Ring? Yeah, it's it's pretty similar in terms of the Flemish artists. I love their work. I love their compositions. Um, and I definitely at various points in my like just artistic career, I guess, have looked to those artists. I think uh, from the past, my favorite artist has to be Bruegel because I just love his characters and his line and his expressions. Um, so I never get tired of seeing his paintings. And then more recently, I think uh, Alice Neal or someone like that, um, people, especially with this series, always say Alex Katz when they look at my work, I think, because there's a strong line um, kind of a, a similar sort of composition um, to his work. Those are some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So uh, my uh, next question, you you both uh, came from the background of uh, when social media became so popular uh, in the um, maybe 90s, 80s. And um, you also came from different countries. So how does social media uh, influence you? Would you like to uh, talk about that? Uh, okay, so I'm really not very, I'm not really a big fan of social media. I think that I, I was born kind of like right in the middle. I'm 38 right now, but to give you an example, I didn't have Instagram till I was almost 30. So, and I had my first phone when I was 21. So for me, it came late in life. So I was, I did not grow up with it. So it kind of like incorporated into my life later. So I'm a little bit more, I won't say negative about it, but I'm more, I, I distrust a little bit of it since I have it kind of like a different growing up when I was younger. I mean, I, I'm glad I didn't have a social media when I was 12, 13, 14, you know, in that way. So I think I, I, I try to paint about that and talk about about that a little bit in my paintings. I think it's it's more about maybe the, I don't know what the, the word would be, the the distress that maybe social media has on people today, this sometimes feeling of isolation that may have. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards more of that side with, with social media. N not a very cheerful one, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and how are you? Right? Yeah, you can balance it out with me. Um, I also, I didn't do like MySpace or Friendster. Um, I didn't really get involved with social media until Facebook. Um, but I do, I do enjoy Facebook and Instagram. Um, I do like to experiment with different technologies. Um, I, d I haven't gone much past that just because it is a lot of work. Um, but I, I feel like, um, it's kind of goes hand in hand with our physical, like in person networks. Um, so I really think of social media as being kind of one in the same with those kind of a different aspect of it. Um, so you can really get, in my opinion, what you put into it. Um, if you, you know, are talking with your friends, keeping in touch with your friends, it's fun. If you're following the wrong, I don't know, content or people who are posting a lot of negative content, then it's not very much fun. Um, so I do, 
I do like it. I do like keeping in touch with people on it. And I do think it has influenced my artistic practice just because it kind of serves as like this feed of all this different information of what other artists are doing that you can stay in touch with in a way that it'd be really difficult to go to each artist's website. You just wouldn't remember to do that. Um, so I do love it in that way as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this show, um, you all painting people and some women, some uh, single, some uh, group. So like for instance, ring, you are painting um, people who are around you. Some of them I even know, I even know before. And yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, Ramiro, do you have a specific uh, target for your, you know, your portrait? Is there a certain people or just a normal figure? Uh, I usually work with friends, the people that I, that, that, that I paint are usually friends or friends of friends. I agree with Ryan that Instagram or social media has helped me reach a lot of more people too, that I wouldn't be able to do it if I wouldn't have Instagram. I've met a lot of artists that I haven't met like Van Minen or Chloe Weiss uh, that I love. So uh, when I paint, I usually, yes, I, I like that observation that you made. All, some of Ryan's work, you have a lot of people in them. And in mine, it's usually just one person with a shadow in the background. So yeah, I t I'm talking about, I, it's, I do it on purpose that I choose just single people. My idea, again, is to try to show that isolation that some people do feel with social media, that like anxiety that can get to you being all day, like searching for approval and likes and et cetera, and trying to be cool. And so I, I'm, I'm trying to work more on that side of the, of the part of social media. And, and of course, it's a reflection of myself, too. Like I always say, I'm part of that, too. I'm, I'm playing the game, too. Um, a lot of the things that appear in the paintings are from are, are like books of mine or stuff that talk about me, too. So, yeah. And, and again, I usually paint friends of people that I know. So mm -hmm. there's this definite aspect of like fear of missing out, like everyone's putting forth their best face and you don't even know what's real on social media that can really always sort of having, put you in a weird headspace. Yeah, always having to be happy and everything has to be cool and cool. And Perfect. you get the chance to, and you get the chance to edit it too. You know, you can get a photo, you don't like it, you take another one. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. You're like a work in progress. You're like a character that you can you know, like change your clothes, put the book, move the chair. There's like a Mise Sen on it that that uh, it also appeals to me. Mm-hmm. How about you, Ring? Why you choose people you are so familiar uh, as a target? I really wanted to highlight local networks. I feel like a lot of the commentary on social media is these kind of, you know, influencers and very famous people. But what keeps me coming back to social media and what I enjoy about it are the people that I see that I get to um, keep in touch with in person and see what they're doing on social media it kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, so I wanted to capture, you know, people who are active on social media and um, how they use it, I guess, and have them be part of this specific local network from Chicago South Side. The series Shameless. What's that? Have you seen the series Shameless? <laughs> yes, I have. I live near there. <laughs> I like What's that? It's in Chicago South Side. South Side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like less than a mile that way. <laughs> really? Well, I love that show. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> so um, you just all uh, mentioned about uh, you like social media. Is there anything you disliked or you want to uh, uh, put uh, any criticism on it? Yeah, I think um, like some of the some of the pictures, you know, when you see them, and you see people having a good time, and you're maybe sitting at home by yourself. You know, you feel a little like pang, like you wish you were there, you wish you were having fun rather than sitting by yourself. So there's definitely a, a flip side to it. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, yes, I agree. I agree with Ryan. Uh, a little bit of what I was talking earlier. 
this feeling that I think it, it can isolate you a little bit too. And at the same time, one of the, the good things about it is the, the way you can access information. But I think that sometimes at the same time, a lot of information can be bad. You know, I, I don't know. I think that at the end, you don't absorb anything. You just go by, you know? So I don't know. I think it's a double-edged kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think the portrait in art history has transformed so much from the beginning it's for god and it's for emperor and then it's for you know the novels celebrities and now it becomes the portrait becomes people around you uh it's uh maybe that's uh the the something good about the uh social media it it it, it gives everyone a stage, uh, a place to, you know, explore yourself or talk about yourself. I agree with you. But at the same time, I think it's kind of like the same. We were talking about the Flemish painters before. And they use portrait as a way to show their own wealth. They would be painting with, uh, with oranges and exotic flowers. So people can see how much money they have or what their social status was. And sometimes you get that on social media too, you know, people are putting their Gucci Prada things and the Rolex and trying to like flex and be, it's kind of like the same, they're kind of like doing it the same like 600 years later, but in a phone. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's cool too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. to kind of continue what you're saying, it's always been important to me in the, the people that I paint that they seem every day to to talk about the importance of the everyday people in our lives, the everyday situations that we're in to really appreciate that. Um, and I do like that about social media. And that is part of the reason I chose to focus on a local network rather than doing portraits of famous people or something like that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And my final question with you is the color. You all use very different colors and other I think one of uh, your style is, uh, you know, come to our eyes first is the colors. So would you like to talk about the colors you use? Yeah, um, the colors aren't the same colors as they're seen on the social media site. Um, I do like to use bright colors. Um, and for each of them, I, I really just picked a color for the person that I felt fit them. Um, and I like to use the color complement to kind of make it pop, um, make it feel like a painting. Um, so it's, uh, it's a little bit of the personality. It's putting my own interpretation kind of front and center. Um, but the colors have been something I've used pretty consistently um, for the past 10 years. I love bright colors um, and love playing with the different shades within a single color. So like all the different blues and all the different yellows and things like that. Yeah, I think that's probably uh, the reason uh, we can feel the temperature from your art. That's something uh, <laughs> quite uh, amazing. Yeah, for me. Yeah. How about Thank Ramiro? You. What? How you? Your color is more uh, like strong uh, contrast. Would you like to talk about that? I think we I think we both use a lot of strong colors in our and a lot of contrast in our paintings. I think that's a point where they need to more than more than with the social media thing too. Uh, I I I didn't tell you this before, but when I studied at school in university, I did uh, printmaking. So I used to be a I used to do woodcuts and a lot of graphic work. So I used to use a lot of just plain color, you know. So, and very bright colors. So I think that's still stuck in, in, in my work. I do like big contrast and a lot of colors and big shiny things like Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I wish uh, we could uh, have more time to talk about your art in person in future. And uh, as the COVID is getting uh, to the end. So uh, we'll, like to welcome you to come back to Taipei or Shanghai to have a visit and talk about more of your art. And so uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been very honored to work with you. 
and to have you with us today. And I think this will be a very successful show for both of us, uh, for, for us. So thank you, and thank you for the interview. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, it's an care. honor to show there. Yeah. Yes. I'm very, very happy to be working with you guys. Take care. Yes. Thank you.